And what, you know, what came home to me as, uh, as uh, Ted was sharing that was that there was uh, an incredible outpouring of God's Holy Spirit uh, during the next few months. Uh, because that took place on about the 30th of October. And then he read a, a newspaper article, you know, which indicated that by December, which was just about three months later, 34,000 people had uh, uh, partaken in these meetings. And then, of course, after that, any of you who know about the Welsh Revival know that Evan Roberts would turn up to preach at a church, but the church would have been full from early morning. People would have closed their businesses to get a seat in the church, and there would be hundreds outside. And when he would arrive, he would go up and just open in prayer in Welsh and then sit down. And the service just went on. Prayer and confession of sin and conversions and baptism with the Spirit. And they would still be there at 2 o'clock in the morning. And at times right at 6 a.m. the next morning. So it was God moved among them. And it came home to me, I mean, wouldn't God move that way among us? I mean, we, we couldn't make God bring a worldwide revival, but it does seem that where God's people walk in light, at least the Holy Spirit moves freely among them and brings Jesus' life into existence among them. And I, I was just thinking, I mean, I mean, maybe I'm, maybe it's being extreme, but could it be th that we actually, here, even in this room tonight, have a whole lot of, I mean, I know it's unthinkable, but unconfessed sin, you know. And it, it, Ted, you remember the other thing was doubtful things. And it just came home to me. I mean, there are all kinds of things that we need to see happening among us ourselves. There are healings that we need to see completed. You have loved ones that aren't in Jesus. We have a campus that is fairly well untouched by Jesus these days. But we ourselves, you know we believe that Jesus moves freely among us in power when we fulfill those conditions, indeed when we just walk in light. So I was wondering, does that mean that on the outside we look kind of good Christians, as they say, and we're a nice body of people. But does it mean that we actually have a whole lot of unconfessed sin among us? Or we're all involved in all kinds of doubtful things that we're not really sure of, but we're kind of carrying them on because we say, well, the Lord hasn't really convicted us of them. And then when, when he mentioned, you know, the, the profession of Christ, I wonder, do we have it in our heads? And are we all saying day by day at work, well, we don't want to put them off Jesus by being too open about it. Or we don't want to go around knocking on doors like Dan Salem does because that doesn't come too naturally to us. And could it be that we're all actually kind of living in sin? You know, we, we don't think we're living in sin because we're kind of not sleeping with anybody or, or we're not, we've turned away from a lot of the sins that were in our lives, but we're actually not doing obedience. We're not, we're not doing obedience, you know. In other words, could it be that all of us have all kinds of little feelings about maybe somebody else here tonight or somebody else who isn't here, and we keep that in our hearts, and we kind of keep it there, and it's kind of a root of bitterness, and it just stays there 
But that's what stops us entering into the revival life in our own lives and the revival life as a group. I mean, don't you, don't you think it must be? I mean, don't you think it must be? Don't you think that wherever God's people fulfill the conditions of revival, wherever they confess their sin and get it out in the open and get rid of it and agree about that and turn from it, and wherever they turn from things that are doubtful, God sees them. And wherever they obey God's Spirit, obey in actual action, and wherever they begin to go out of their way to profess Christ or to talk about Him to somebody else, do you not think that the Holy Spirit would move among us as He, as he did in that revival? And loved ones are. I mean, it's just not sensible to say he wouldn't. You know, it's not. And, and I know, I think we're a great group. You know, I, I think the world of you, and you think I'm all right. And we, we all, we like each other. And I think it's great. You know, we have a great operation. But we don't have a revival. <laughs> sure, we don't. We don't. I mean, I mean, other churches would look at us and think we're in revival. And we've been in a remarkable state of revival compared with other churches for years, almost since we started. But we all know it isn't what is talked about in this Welsh revival. It isn't that. There isn't a, a deep conviction of sin. I mean, you find that with the ones you talk to, don't you, at work. There is no deep conviction of sin. Look, there are some of you here who have relatives, I know, and there's no conviction of sin in them at all. You know there isn't. There's not even a vague interest in God. And it seems that conviction of sin comes when we get convicted about our sin. And it seems to me that what we could have, you know, is a kind of a hard-packed ice down there. You know, we're kind of soft and squashy up here, but when we get down here somewhere, in maybe most of our lives, there's kind of hard-packed ice where there's unconfessed sin that we have no intention of confessing because we don't want to forsake it, and where we have doubtful things that we're glad we're not absolutely sure what God thinks of them because we want to hang on to them. And all of that is really a controlled surrender, isn't it? It's not wanting to do whatever so that God would move. I mean, it's not an attitude of, Lord, I'll do whatever. Here, Lord, cut me open. I'll do whatever, Father, for you to move. It's not that. It's a kind of a uptight, close attitude. I'm a child of God, and that's all that matters. But it, it seems, loved ones, that if we would break open, surely God's Spirit would move. Douglas, I think I told you about this. Douglas Crossman, who is the gentleman that sold us the library upstairs, the Scroggy Library, preached in that Mariah Chapel maybe 10 years ago. And he knew there was one very old man there who had been in the revival and had written a little book about it, actually. And he asked the minister, "Could you? is that man here? Could you introduce me to him? And the man had come up to, came up to him afterwards. And uh, Douglas Crossman said to him, uh, I, f I forget the man's name, but he said uh, to him his name, you, Mr. So-and-so, you were in the revival. And the man almost crumpled to the uh, ground, you know. It was as if the power of God was still there. And he almost crumpled to the ground, you know. Uh, when, he, when he mentioned it. And uh, it seems that that's what we want to see. You know. We want to see a deep working of God that will move among our hearts and will enable you, when someone comes along, 
30, 40 years hence, or somebody comes to our children and asks about it, that they will sense that. And see, loved ones, it seems to me that doesn't come with trickery, you know, or even these stupid tears. It doesn't come with all that stuff, you know. It doesn't come with emotion. It doesn't come with, well, we know, we all know it doesn't. We've, we've turned from all the tricks of the, of the clever music and all that stuff or the, or the showy preacher, you know. We've turned from that. But it doesn't come with all that stuff. It seems from what we read that it comes from honesty in the hearts of men and women like you and me. And I think that requires us to search our hearts and to act, you know, so that we say, well, we don't know what everybody else is doing, but as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. I am going to get things right with you, Lord. And I'm going to clean out everything that's doubtful, and I'm going to turn from it, and I'm going to confess any sin, both to you, Lord, and to the person that I sinned against. And then, Holy Spirit, I'm going to obey you, whatever it means. And then, Lord Jesus, I'm going to stop being a clam, closed mouth Christian who won't speak your name to anybody, lest I suffer some of the reproach that you bore. Lord Jesus, I'm going to start talking about you to other people. Loved ones, I do think that it would be the same as most other things in your life and mine. I think action would release a lot of pressure and tension and would resolve a lot of problems. It really do. And I think God's Spirit would, would move among us and I think it wouldn't be long. Before, it only took three months, and there were 34,000 involved. It wouldn't be long before men and women would know that some men and women are dealing with God in honesty. And I, that's, you know, what else is there? And I don't know about you, but I don't want to carry on running services. Do you, I? You, anybody can run services. What we want to see is God's Holy Spirit moving among us in power. And what we want to see is, I mean, who cares very much about 10,000? I don't care about 10,000, but we want to see thousands going abroad, don't we? we? Because we know only God's Spirit can bring that about. We can't bring it about. But it seems to me that's what we want. I think that's why most of us came together here over these past 14 years. And I think it has to start with us, Lord. And what I've found in my own life is I start with what I know, and then God's Spirit can take me deeper, you know. So it might be good, and it might be good to have a prayer time, to be free to pray as God guides you in quietness or aloud, and as He would guide you to just deal with your sins, and I'll deal with those that I know. And then the important thing would be then that we'd be begin to walk in this obedience, see. We'd begin to profess Christ. We'd begin to obey the Holy Spirit and not do what is convenient for us or what somebody else thinks. And then that we'd walk in openness with each other. That is where we've got used to kind of maybe criticizing somebody behind their back or that. We'd just stop that. I mean, we'd just start being open and start being real with each other. And, you know, we'll, ha we'll have to do it sometime. I mean, there is nothing Jesus said, whispered in private rooms that will not be proclaimed upon the housetops. There will come a day when everything will be manifested, you know, and then for our condemnation. So it really is either coming into cleanness now when we can be saved and delivered and be used by God, or it all being proclaimed then. But I think, you know, if you find heaviness in your own life or kind of a deadness or a coldness, it's, I would think, because of this. So let's just pray together. Let's pray. <coughs> Dear Father, we don't want to be a, a, just a nice church 
For, Lord, we don't want to be hypocrites. And, Father, we don't want to be doing something that other human beings could imitate. Lord, we want to see you work your work that can't be imitated among us. Lord, we really do want that kind of revival, new life from your own right hand. And so, Lord, if you see sin in our lives, or, Lord, if you've been pointing out sin to us and we have argued with you about it and pushed it to the back. Or, Lord, if you've brought things up to us and we like to call them doubtful, Lord, we see we'll get nothing from the Lord unless we put away all doubtful things and are absolutely honest before you and open and clear and clean. And, Lord, we know enough about our society to know that only such people can be used by God to cut through this gray and lukewarm society. And then, Lord, if you see that we're not obeying you, Holy Spirit, anywhere in our lives, will you make us aware of that? Or if we're not professing Christ, if, Lord Jesus, there are people in our work that don't know we're Christians because we're so quiet about it. Lord, we want to put ourselves outside ourselves. We want to put ourselves out on the line and separate ourselves from all this self-defensiveness and self-protectiveness, which is just God, just being God, just wanting to keep ourselves to ourselves and run our own lives our own way. Lord, it's just sin. But we've just got so used to it that we think it's the way we live a Christian life. Lord, we want to begin to be honest with you tonight. Confess and turn from these things.